Hi everybody, thank you so much for coming and uh, for yeah, spending your Sunday with us. I think it's a great idea, fantastic film that you're going to see. My name is Eve Brunson, I'm from the team of the uh, Zanti Women Film Festival. So honoured to play this film. Osman Simbel is a, as people know, is a, is a father of star. The name of the film is Simbel. It is a documentary to showcase this very important man, who is very important in the uh, in the rather the history of film, and also who, who continues to inspire a lot of filmmakers in Africa. We will have a um, we will watch the film. Uh, thank you, Eve, and uh, all uh, protocols uh, observed uh, from uh, our government uh, representatives, representatives of the university, as well as the film practitioners and the film students uh, that are here. Um, so this, for me, is, like I said to Eve, a throwback. It's throwing me back into a space that I haven't been active in in a very long time. But in St. Ben's tradition, I think I just appreciate the opportunity to be able to be part of a group of people that are interested in St. Ben's story. And I hope that this workshop here will be able to just allow 10 more people to hear the story of St. Ben. So when you walk out of here, just 10 more people, and we uh, continue growing the story like that. In opening up the floor to questions, the scene in the film where you saw Sam Ben's film's art is for me one of the most seminal moments in this film. So I'd like to open up the discussion uh, by maybe posing that question to say, we are here as keepers of memory in our different respects. How does that scene particularly affect us and how do we think that we can contribute towards making sure that uh, our role is played in making sure that we keep uh, some of these important memories that we're creating? So in that case, um, I just want to ask, does anybody know what happened to the entire body of work from the film resource unit? Well, I was on the board of the Film Resource Unit when we unfortunately had to shut it down and everybody ran off the board and left us, myself, Anna Chaitu and Joy Team Ministry at the time. With some measure of dignity. When that institution had to shut down, it shut down at a particular point in the history of this country when it didn't care anymore. It shut down with another institution called the Southern African Film and Television Market in Cape Town. They said your favorite scene in Hala. No, the one that I just watched over and over again. <laughs> the one that you watched over and over again about what happens in a political space that affects everything else. My sister, the story of the film this was unique is a political story, the story of what happens in this country? There are systems in place, right? There's archive systems, so like either a state will put money into it, there's federal money that comes into it, so that like an NGO's got money to do what they need to do. Whoever it is that's um, tasked with flying them over, there's university grants, there's an entire system. So imagine what happened to Fru, right? And how you guys found yourselves by yourselves, having to carry everything. And then you take it to Senegal, this person, this person dies, and it's like, who's, who's gonna care, right? A lot of the people, um, a lot of the intellectuals were either forced into an exile, economic and educational exile, right? So they had to leave the country. Um, some had to leave for work. So yeah, who was going to, who was going to preserve and save? This issue of rights, yes. Because um, 
قد دي بانفريكان فيدريشن اوف فيلم ميكرز سبيس دورين ماي تايم دي دي ايشو اوف جيتينج ذا انديرستاندينج اوف وير ذوز رايتس لايز اند هاو لونج اند وين تو جيت ذيم باك بيكوز ايفن ان ذا ريست اوف ذا كونتيننت ذوز فيلمز ذات هاف بين بوت All the rights have been bought, and for 30, I think more than 30 years, mm -hmm. more than 30 years. That means it even stops them to use their film to be seen, you know, in the space that we're talking yes, about, mm -hmm. and be distributed. So it's, it's, even though we, even if we, today we found a solution, or which we are trying to do, and I'm sharing with you, we're trying to build. Um, what I call an alternative distribution system. That means having individuals in each country <coughs> that have um, either a, a, a theater or who have access to, you know, to the audience. Uh, some, some countries have started building uh, cinemas now. You see, in Nigeria there was no cinema before. And now they are building cinemas. Um, in Uganda, in Kenya, in, in um, uh, um, Rwanda, All those, all those countries are now regaining, in fact, their interest into the industry. So there are systems that are being put in place, but when they want to have access to those films, the issue is that the rights have been bought on all, as, as, as um, 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 Lebon is saying, on all um, platforms. platforms. So you can't even take into the cinema. Um, in the meantime, if somebody does want to show films um, of this nature, you you can speak to to multi choice, and sometimes there's a fee, sometimes there isn't. You you can negotiate. You're right, but we know where they are. But what we know is that Africa's got the most youth than mm -hmm. any other continent in the world. And so, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that um, if you interact with youth here, what you'll find is that young film and media practitioners, because film doesn't exist in a vacuum anymore mm -hmm. like it did, young film and media practitioners are not interested in the history of African cinema. Okay. There are different reactions when people see themselves in film. I've spoken to a lot of black youth here in South Africa who, when they see films that are very similar to themselves, they actually react to it negatively because they're so used to these distant images mm -hmm. of which are like, they can't really associate it with, right? And so what needs to happen is that the current media that Africans are, con the current African media that Africans are comfortable interacting with, which there is, needs to link them with and this. I, if, 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 if I come in there, I think that what you're saying is that the definition of a filmmaker has changed now, right? So Sam Ben was a filmmaker in a particular era, had to deal with particular issues that were relevant for his generation. He was yeah. faced with particular challenges. You, you raise a really good question. I mean, it's like, why, why make uh, films that people aren't going to watch them? And it's like, it's a very philosophical question. It's like, similar to if a tree falls in the forest and nobody is there to hear it, did it fall? And the thing is, we also have, I think we have to broaden our idea of what constitutes films now. And I mean, now there's all this really interesting internet content that's being made by South Africans, which I think, and Africans rather, because somebody mentioned can see me and, and, and so on. There's a web series from Cape Town called The Foxy Five, which is kind of like inspired by uh, Rose Must Fall and some of, some of the people from Rose Must Fall in it and that kind of thing. And I think this is, this is accessible. This is like, so if you put it up on YouTube and it's there and it's archived and um, I think that the youth have, coming back to what you're saying, the youth have a really big role to play in terms of determining this, this stuff, you know, like in terms of, you know, start an app or start, you don't have to start an app, but start a, a web series or start a new way of get his, getting these things out. So I want to talk a bit of, around transmedia um, because I think this is uh, going to become, it's the future of marketing in film, it's going to become critical, in fact it is already critical that we start engaging transmedia as one of our strategies in film. 
and looking at the entire value chain of how it traditionally was and that distribution and marketing is put somewhere at the end of the value chain when actually it needs to be brought right up front. And so we put all of this focus on development and the script and so forth when at the same time your transmedia strategy needs to be developed at that same time because you're setting yourself up for the audiences not, not getting the, the numbers that you want. Transmedia is about addressing that, it's about marketing, it's about your business your ROI, etc., and something that schools need to start addressing in terms of getting filmmakers and stop producing just workers in the film industry, but also as to how every single person in the crew are part of the marketing team. The film was actually interesting, um, directed to the African people, and um, what I liked about the film is that um, see, see, Simbene, was not really afraid to tell African stories to African people. That, that was actually triggering. And what makes me sad is that all the films that he made got written and that was something that triggered my mind to say that why can't we tell African stories freely so and why can't we access them so that we can actually view and tell the stories to other generations and other generations. So I my name is Randy Dibelani. I'm from Pan African Curator Studio and I worked for Pan African Federation of Filmmakers. I mean, the film is, is great, it tells who we are, and then uh, especially because um, the guy had done his job by just uh, putting together all the Simbena's work into one thing just to try and let people know who Simbena was and how, what he was trying to say in all his films. So for me, the story was really interesting because it was telling, it's more of a story about an African icon that we never got to know till now. So the reason it was interesting is that it um, it shows fil films about the films that he's made uh, that talk about African stories for instance and when you look at it you come to realize that we have been so focused on Hollywood stories and this mainstream cinema thing that we, it, we even forgetting to tell our own stories. I think the film was quite intense. I think it, it made me question Simbene a lot. I think I was a big fan of his and I never knew some of the personal aspects of who he was, like I just knew his films. And I think it was interesting to see that and the way that people interacted with him and how he was just a, like the person that he was. I think it was really cool. I think, yeah, it felt, it felt nice, it felt warm. It was, it was a nice film.